Exodus 20, and we'll pick it up at first one. Go ahead, brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise the Lord. Now let's go over to Revelation 22. Ecclesiastes. I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. <laughs> that was a test. Don't test that was me. a don't, test. Don't test. He me. passed with flying Don't up. test me. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Get it, brother. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Yes, sir. Fear of God and keep his commandments, mm -hmm. for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Praise the Lord. Now let's go over to Revelation 22, verses 14 and 15. Revelation 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm -hmm. that they may have right to the tree of life uh -huh. and may enter in through the gates into the city. Uh -huh. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh they lie. Yes, so. And those were the reading of the commandments. Amen. Those commandments can save you. Amen. So we give you that off the top in case you got to leave her. Right? Them commandments, if you pay attention to those, you can get through this life, Israel. And that's what we advocate here. Now, today's lesson, I'm Brother Jesse. I'm Brother Jesse. And uh, my reader is Brother Daniel. And he, Daniel the Corrector. And uh, he gonna make sure I stay on track today. Because I will veer off. Praise the Lord. So I'm glad I got this brother Reed with me today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, son. I didn't have my glasses. So today's lesson is, we, we teach by subject and title, though, right? So it, this is a Bible study class. Well, understand? So we put an emphasis on learning. Amen. So once you leave here today, if you go through these lessons on your own, you'll find that the Lord will open up his book to you. Amen. You'll open it up, but you got to be able to handle what you're going to hear, well, like what you're going to hear today. Mm -hmm. Today's lesson is every idle word. The word idle here, when you do the definition of the word idle, uh, a lot of y'all probably will, it's like when you talk about conversation, it's pointless conversation. Amen. Conversation that leads to nowhere. Amen. 
right? right? But it could be used as a weapon, pointless conversation, right? But when you ride with God, when you, take, when you say, I'm going to follow God, the first thing the Lord tells you to do is look at you. Amen. How could you fix you Amen. before you try to fix anyone else? Amen. So there's a, there's a period of time when you should just be quiet Amen. and look at you. Amen. And that's when you, the Lord can start communicating with you. Because now you're the one on stage. You're the one that's being critiqued. Nobody likes that. But when you become a servant, your words are very important. When you become a servant, you have to watch how you use your knowledge. So today, we're going to examine this, right? I want you all to pick it up with me. And you know what? You might as well start with an example. I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Say something, brothers. Kids, get out of here. Kids, class. Them brothers making hands saying. Come on, man. Tell the kids, got to get out. Parents need freedom. Quietly. Quietly. If you got an ID, you ain't a kid. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, brother, could you bring me one of them fresh new Bibles? See you, Caitlin. <laughs> she waved at me hard. <laughs> a big one, brother. Don't play with me. <laughs> he know what he doing. Trying to do that on purpose. Give me a little book. <laughs> thank you, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, dear, dear, thank you. So, for you guys, it's important that I start off with an example. Because you know what? Y'all look like y'all hard-headed. <laughs> so we gonna start this lesson off with the best example I can give you of how to control what you say. Okay? Let's go to 2 Samuel 1. Are we okay, brother? Yes, sir. You ain't got nothing to do, nothing else to read for this. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm on check. You will put me in check. 2 Samuel 1. <laughs> Now, you got to learn how to control this. Because sometimes this will run off without you. Right? And a lot of people say, well, they talk a lot. <laughs> well, you know, it's important to control what you say. So we're going to pick this up with King David. Right? Is everything all right? <laughs> all right, 2 Samuel 1. 2 Samuel 1. We're going to take a look at this, brother. 2 Samuel 1. Go ahead, my brother. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites. Slaughter of who? Amalekites. So he been killing the Amalekites right here. That's what David did. David stayed out to war all the time, right? 2 Samuel 1, go ahead. And David had abode two days in Ziklag. Mm -hmm. It came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent mm -hmm. and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance. obeisance. Oh, yes, sir. And David said unto him, From whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. And David said unto him, How went the matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered, 
that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. Ooh, now that moved David right there, because he loved Jonathan, and he respected King Saul. No matter what Saul felt about him, he stayed true to God's anointed, right? We got to learn that. Go ahead, brother. And David said unto the young man that told him, how knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan, his son, be dead? And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Geboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Go ahead. And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and called unto me, and I answered, Here am I. Uh, that brother there just fabricated. Hmm. He said, and when he looked back behind him, he saw who? Yeah. Me. In all that chaos, he saw me. Right? And called unto me. And I answered, here I am. Read, Israel. And he said unto me, who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He hated the Amalekites. King David. He just came from killing a lot of them. Here he come, lying, and he happened to be what? An Amalekite. You think the Lord ain't setting a trap here? Come on, brother, read. He said unto me again, stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me. For anguish has come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. Go ahead. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was upon his arm and have brought them hither unto my Lord. This when they tell you, you need to know your audience. See, you didn't know your audience right here. And let's see how David approached this matter. Go ahead, brother. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them. And likewise, all the men that were with him. All them bloody, sweaty men who been killing, rip their garments together. When you tear your garments in Israel, that's a problem. Right? Read, brother. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel because they were fallen by the sword. So you lied. You sitting here watching these men cry. You still standing there. They mourn and all day here you still standing there and told that lie. Now let's see how David bring it, bring this thing to him. Go ahead. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger in a Malachite. Go ahead. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Wait a minute. Now it done flipped. You thought you were finna get a reward. But what did he say? Read it again, brother. Yes, sir. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointing? Go ahead. And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. He did what? He died. David told one of them cats, go kill him for killing the Lord's anointed. Kill that buster, right? Well, go ahead, brother. And David said unto him, thy blood be upon thy head. Why? For thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. You better watch your mouth when you're trying to get exalted. Don't lie. Tell the truth all the time. He thought he was going to get a promotion. And he done killed one of God's men. And killed that King David. Killed him that day. You think God ain't playing? The words you speak are very valuable. You can hurt yourself and you can hurt others. Right? Let's go to Matthew 12. Because people going to say about us. They going to say a certain thing about us. The people that lived before, they're going to say, y'all had it easy, right? 
Let's go to Matthew 12. Our situation ain't nothing compared to what some of these people went through. But we complain every chance we get. Not knowing that people went through much more difficult things than you. And still doing it at this very moment. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Pick it up at 41, brother. Yes, sir. Matthew 12 and 41. Go ahead, brother. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Go ahead. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. She's saying, y'all got Jesus. Right. Y'all had all that. And y'all still don't get it. She said, we had Solomon. I went to see him myself. And y'all had Jesus, and y'all still don't get it? Read, brother. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. You cleaned yourself up when you came here. Your house got clean. All them demons gone. Right? Read, brother. Then he said, I will return into my house. I will what? Return into my house. From whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Because it's clean. Them demons left. Now you clean. You good. He come back. Everything is in proper shape. You walking right. You doing right. Go ahead, brother. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. You got to watch your steps when you come, when you say, I'm entering the covenant with God. You ain't going nowhere. That covenant is still there. You the one that walked back into that world and got reoccupied by all type of evil spirits. And you think you ain't got them in you. See, that's the problem. You got to stay clean. You got to stay prayed up. You got to stay in this word. You got to come to class. You supposed to get better when you leave here, yes, not sir. worse. Yes, sir. Some of the behavior sometimes lets us clearly know you ain't grew at all. And we don't have to say nothing. It's just your behavior. Exude and show everything. James 3, brother. James 3. If you want to be perfect, let's show you how to be perfect. Them demons come right back and, and reoccupy that space. You talking about, I'm just tired. I'm, I'm worship weary. No. You wicked. You love that wickedness. But if you want to be perfect with God, we're going to read this, James 3. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. James 3, verse 1. Go ahead and read. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Yeah, calm down, brother. You don't run everything. Be not many masters. Play your role. Read. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Look, if you, you control this and quit offending people, the Lord say you are, you are a perfect man. We you control your mouth. That's when you perfect. Read, Israel. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Go ahead. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, 
whithersoever the governor listeth. The small hammer is a small piece on the back of the boat that's steering it. I mean, very small. But it has so much power. It plays a great role in that ship being able to move and steer. It, it's very much needed. Read, Israel. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Go ahead. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell. This tongue can start wars. Many people have been killed because of words. Because of words. Read Israel. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. By who? Mankind. We have. We catch lions. We catch tigers. We catch bears. Y'all need to stop. <laughs> right? Hey, read, brother. But the tongue can no man tame. Can no man tame that tongue. Read. It is an unruly evil. What? Full of deadly poison. Mm hmm Therewith bless we God, uh -huh. even the Father. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. I have seen this. I have seen them bless you with their mouth and curse you at the same time. It's a ridiculous thing when you see it. But God is saying, look, I told you. Read, brother. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Go ahead. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things are not so to be. It is not, brother. It, it is not a lot. Look. When you read this word, you should have fear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, you shouldn't be full of fear. I mean, you shouldn't be saying anything about anybody right. but you. Right. But you. Read, brother. 11. Does they found sin forth as the same place, sweet water and bitter? No. Read, brother. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Go ahead. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. With good what? Works. And good, good conversation. conversation. Meekness. Look, you know when a brother that way. They say, you, you be like, oh, he's so humble. You be like, wow. That brother's so kind. That sister's so nice. And that's the way they always are. It is not no up and down thing. They're always fearful of God and watching how they talk to God's people. Always. All the time. Read, Israel. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Go ahead. This wisdom descended not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. You all in your emotions instead of reading the scriptures. Don't let your emotions put you in trouble with God. Control your emotions. Read, brother. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. And where there's confusion, there's no Christ. He is not the author of confusion. So if it's confusion, walk away from it. You don't have to be there because you can see it right away. That's right. You're out. Nope, I don't want nothing to do with that. That's right. I encourage you, walk away because this is where they do their work at in God's house. Mm. So be watchful because Satan is right here with us. There's tear sitting right out here ready to separate you. Know that coming here, wherever you go, he went to make war with the righteous. And if you righteous, guess where you at? You at in war. Right. 
You in war? Every Where day. you at? 17. Read. 18, I'm sorry. Read, bro. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Stop. Did y'all hear that? I don't think they Read did. it again, brother, slowly. Yes, sir. But the wisdom that is from above is what? Is first pure. Pure! Untouched. Undefiled. What else? Then peaceable. Be at peace, my brother. All the time. Read. Gentle. Take it easy. That's right. Take it easy. Soft touch. Soft words. Read, brother. And easy to be entreated. Go ahead. Full of mercy. Oh, don't worry about it. May the Lord be merciful right away. He was wicked. May the Lord be merciful right away. Read, brother. And good fruits. Go with, ahead. Without partiality. And without and without hypocrisy. Go ahead. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So guess what you should be doing? Making peace if you want peace. That's right. Control that mouth. It hurt people really bad. Your words can hurt. They can hurt really bad, right? We are the children that's in this book. We are descendants of them. If you read about in Exodus, their behavior, we are their children. So what do we have here? Let's go to Numbers. Numbers 11. You don't want Proverbs, bro? Proverbs 12, keep me on track. Praise the Lord, man, praise the Lord. Proverbs 12, brother. I ain't going to test you no more. <laughs> Proverbs 12. Yeah, man, you got to control your mouth. It's so powerful, right? You control it at work. No, you control it at work. You be at your cubicle like, mm, what's your mm? <laughs> you shut up at work. I mean, you do. You just shut that thing down because you don't agree with a lot of stuff. But you be like, whip, I want my check. Proverbs 12, what to say, brother? 12 and 18. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. You can use this word to really hurt people. The piercing of a sword, that's like somebody just, just piercing you with it. That's when you be like, white people gonna bow down to me. That kind of doctrine, the piercing of a sword. But when you teach this thing right, it's coming off like music. It's pure. And you, you ain't holding nothing against nobody. You just flowing with that word. And that thing come out so beautifully, right? And the Lord say, the wise, it's, it's good health. The words of the wise is what? What, brother? It says, there is that speaking like the piercings of a sword. Yes, sir. But the tongue of the wise is health. It's health, brother. We need to be able to give a good word to make other people feel good about where they are. It's okay, brother. I started like you. Look what the Lord did in my life. You see what I mean? So you can use this tongue the way you want to use it. Let's go to Numbers 11. Is that right, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Numbers 11, right? And let's look at our relatives, our forefathers, because y'all ain't no different. That's right. We're really no different, right? We're just like them, right? And we're under this curse. So, Numbers 11. Pick it up at verse 1. Numbers 11. Pick it up at verse 1 and read, brother. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. The people did what? Complained. Uh-huh. It displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. See, because when the Lord get angry, somebody going to die. 
because he don't play. Well, remember, we're ungrateful. These people, the Lord did so much, and they complaining. They're complaining. I mean, did so much. That's like we are now. The Lord done did so much, and you constantly complaining. I ain't got nothing to eat. I can't get to work. I ain't got no money. Why well, everybody beating on me? Right? But you don't know your history. You toe up. Read. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Go ahead. And he called the name of the place Tabara, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Go ahead. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Because it was a mixed multitude. Right? And they complaining now. I mean, we want something to eat. Right? And so is Israel. Read. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You remember the what? The, the fish. We ate in where? Egypt. Freely? Freely. Ain't none free in Egypt for you. Somebody lying right here. Read. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Hey, we was eating good while we were slaves. Kind of like y'all doing right now. Y'all got all this in y'all cabinet. All of it. Right now. Read, brother. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. Angels food. The Lord raining it down where you can see it. And you mocking it like it's graham crackers. Read, brother. And the manna was a coronator seed. And the color thereof as the color of bedellium. Uh -huh. And the people went about and gathered it. And ground it in mills or beat it in the mortar. And baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Oh, the taste of what? Fresh oil. Look, I don't know what that tastes like. But I'm going to tell you this. I went to an Italian restaurant. They put some oil, olive oil on some bread. And I was like, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> so as a slave, I was like, ugh, this could be pretty good. Right? So, I'm just saying, go ahead, start up first thing again, brother. And the manna was as a coordinator seed, and the color thereof as the color of bedellium. Yes, sir. And the people went about and gathered it, and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Go ahead. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Uh -huh. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Them people got so tired of that manna, they cried. And they chant. They say every man. Right? Go ahead, brother. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? And sometimes you feel like, man, Lord, this is too much. Right? But the Lord ain't going to put on you more than you can bear, man. You can do it if the Lord put it on you. Go ahead, brother. Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom? as a nursing father bear the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their father. He said, man, I'm not their daddy. Why you put all this on me? Read, brother. Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. Go ahead. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. Go ahead. And if thou deal thus with me, Kill me, I pray thee, out of the hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wretched. Hey, man, Israel will make you bad for suicide. I'm telling you, Lord, kill me now. These people driving me crazy. We talking bread here. Right. 
I mean, we talking food. They about to, man, he say, kill me and let me see my own wretchedness. Read, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Listen, I'm going to take some of the pressure off you, bro. The Lord can do that. Let me lighten the load for you, fam. I can do that. I got cats in the camp who I can put this on just like you, who will handle it just like you, right? That's how the Lord get out. Skip down to 19. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days. So the Lord said, you ain't going to eat just one day when I feed you. You ain't going to eat two days. You ain't going to eat 10 days. What did he say? Neither 10 days. Go ahead. Nor 20 days, but even a whole month until it come out of your, at your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you because that ye have despised the Lord. He which despised who? The Lord. Not the food. The Lord. You don't despise the food. You despise the Lord. Read. Which is among you. Which is where? Among you. Walking around, walking right through the camp. You so blind, you can't see it. He walking right among you. Read. And have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Go ahead. And Moses said, The people among who I am are 600,000 footmen. And thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Skip down to 31, brother. And there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea. Oh, you want me? All right, the Lord say, I'm going to bring quails in from where? From the sea. Go ahead. And let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp. And as it were, two cubits high up on the face of the earth. I don't know how two, how two cubits high is, but they say it's from the elbow to the arm, right? A cubit, right? So it's two of them. So that means the quail was up to this high. And then it was a day's journey walking. So you're walking through birds. Come on, toy. You're walking through birds all day. My daughter hate birds. I had to knock her out. <laughs> Come on, toy, beat. <laughs> but you want meat? I'm going to give you meat till it run out of your nose. That's what the Lord said, didn't he? Read, brother. 32. And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten omers. And they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And they said, oh, they putting them handkerchiefs in there. They better, we about to eat. Go ahead, brother. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. While it's in your mouth, I'm going to kill you. You want quail? You're going to choke on it. Mm. And I'm going to kill every one of you. Read, Israel. That's it right there. That was it? Yes, sir. Man, I shouldn't have cut that. Man, that sounds good. But you don't want to complain about nothing that the Lord do for you. If he gave you a box of cereal, thank you, Lord. Bread, thank you, Lord. Lost your job, thank you, Lord. Lord right, praise the Lord. Yeah. You doing something right when you going through stuff. You know you walking this line and they attacking you anyway. You supposed to be like, Lord, thank you. Praise the Lord. That means you're doing this thing right. If everybody loves you, you ain't doing nothing. Right. I'm telling you the truth. You gotta write this book. Lay this book on them every time. Let's go to Proverbs 13. Yes, sir. This book is all you need to be talking about. It run off when you, oh, let's talk. Oh, let me show you what it says in the Bible about it. Oh, no, I got to go. You, you want to gossip, 
but right. you don't want to see what the book say about that gossip. Right. Oh, I flip the gossip. I make, oh, that's a parable. <laughs> <laughs> they run from you. Everything he said, Bible. He think he G you. 13 and 3, brother, what does it say? He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Hey, you could die. You could write a check. Shut your mouth. Because you can get your life taken by running your mouth. I'm telling you. They doing it all over the internet now. All over Google. Oh, what did he say about me? Ride down on him and kill him. What did he say about me? Let me ride down on him and kill him. You know what I mean? The youngsters doing it like, oh, face, oh, you doing? I'm going to catch him on FaceTime and kill him. The words. Words. They kill each other over words, right? Where you at? We had three still. Read. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. And, and it will come. Keep running your mouth. You're going to run into the wrong one. Looking for you. Because <laughs> you've been running your All right in it. I've been waiting for her to say something. I've been waiting for him to say something to me. Step, I walk in your way to say something to me. Go ahead. The Lord watching you and your hate. Exodus 19, right, brother? Yes, sir. Let's see what the Lord said to his children. Exodus 19, pick it up in verse 1, brother, and read. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel encamped before the mount. Go ahead. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him on the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Go ahead. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed. If you what? Will obey my voice indeed. These are conditions. These, this is an if, right? If you obey my voice indeed, and what else? And keep my covenant, uh -huh. then ye shall be a peculiar treasure up to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Real business. All the work earth is his, right? And he said, you're going to be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Great offer. Read, brother. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. He said a kingdom of kings or a kingdom of priests? Priests. Just a, a, a priest ain't a downgrade, y'all. The king had to hear from the priest. Right? So the priest is not a downgrade. A brother the other day wanted to make us kings, no matter what this said. Go ahead, brother. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. What did he lay before the people? All the words. All the words. Amen. The words, Israel, before the people, right? Go ahead. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. 
And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. You see, we ran our mouth, right? All you say, Lord, we will do, right? Then we say that. Exodus 22. Exodus 22. In 28. Exodus 22 and 28. What does it say, brother? Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. You better watch your mouth. If God done chose a leader, you know what I mean? No matter if you like him or not. It don't matter. It don't matter if you agree with him or not. You better have some respect for the people doing God's work. I don't care who it is. You got to find a way to respect what these people are doing for God. You, you got to find a way to do it. You can't become a hardship for people. You can't come plan here and become a negative. You can't make it harder for us. Ain't no need for you to sit here and do that. Everybody in here moving and working, trying to get to salvation. Hopefully they showing that in how they walk. But if you run your mouth around here, people are like, I ain't coming back. All they do is gossip and talk about people. There are clicks up in there. They shouldn't see a click nowhere in here but a light switch. That's it. Shouldn't be nobody clicking up to do nothing in here. And I wish I find it. I'm breaking it up right away. No clicks. No exclusion. Everybody invited. And the kids. Yeah, watch. Wait a minute now. <laughs> Slow down, brother. So you don't want to disrespect God's people on any level. Well, I don't go to the Israel Church of Jesus. So what? I respect the cats that's teaching this word. I don't care who they are. That's right. If they come with this book, I'm with you. But I'm not going to attack you. Right. I can leave that to the Lord. Yeah, Lord thank you. I ain't got to say nothing bad about you. Nope. Yeah, it ain't worth it. And I don't want it coming back to me anyway. So I just shut up. Leave it alone. That's what you need to do. Save them, save your energy for when you need to stand. Because it will be a, a time when you're going to have to deal with them big mouths. And it's okay in the name of Jesus. You got to deal with it. Get thee behind me. Who? Say it. And you see it by their behavior. Think the Lord didn't know Peter? He knew exactly who he was, but he also knew Satan. Mm -hmm. Peter wouldn't talk like that. Satan would. You dig? Where you at? We're at Exodus 23. Read, brother. Verse 1. Thou shalt not raise Hold a... Up. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, we was in Exodus. Okay. Let's transition. Exodus 23, right? You say read, I read. <laughs> you sure do, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you will read to the day, too. Read in Exodus 23 and 1. Read, brother. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. You do not tell the truth every time, right? Don't invite me if you don't want to hear the truth, right? And say, look. Thou shalt not raise a false report, right? Mm -hmm. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness, right? Watch who you rolling with, right? And make sure the truth is on your lips, even if they call you a snitch. <laughs> who stole that him? I know he did, I saw. <laughs> but you was with me, so what? He did it, right? Don't bring me with you then. 
because I tell the truth. And I ain't going to lie. Right? Go ahead, brother. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after the many to rest judgment. Look, you see a crowd of people going to do wicked, right? Hey, and I'm giving you examples. You know, if we all go into Louis Vuitton, we can all run out with something. They can't catch us all. Y'all seen it on TV. Let's ride. We all go in there and take stuff. They don't catch none of us. It's like, oh, we did that together. We good with that, right? You don't want to call with that foolishness, right? Read, brother. Neither shall thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Go ahead. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Oh, your neighbor you hate. But he left his gate open and his dog run around everywhere. You know you could put him back. You like how he get hit by a car. Hate. But the Lord say bring that animal back, don't you? Right. It's your responsibility. I want to see how you act in these situations. Now you on stage. So I want to see if you really hate your neighbor. You got to have barriers, right? You don't have to like him, but you do got to love him. You got to do the things that show love, right? Let me put his animal up. That's an act of love. Let me lock his gate for him, even though he called me the N-word. I'm still going to do God's will under any circumstance. You got to make your mind up, though. If you still got, I'll fight this battle myself, you ain't quite learned nothing yet. If you ain't letting God fight for you, guess who loses? You losing. Where you at, brother? Verse 7. Read. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. It's a keep thee far away from a foul matter, right? That's right. That means with your mouth, don't even talk about it. It ain't worth it. Leave it alone, right? Read, brother. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinded the wise. Go ahead. And perverted the words of the righteous. Learn how to say keep your gifts. What I got for you is free. The word of God is free. In business, when you give gifts, they suspect. In fact, they put a dollar amount on it. You can only give this amount. Because they'll be giving couches, boats, and everything to get your business. Hmm. And I done seen it. I done did it. Oh, yeah, you could be bought. Some could be bought with a box of cookies. <laughs> Some could be bought with patio furniture. But a good salesman going to listen. What do you need? and provide it for them. But a gift is not good. You're not going to be fair if you start taking gifts. No, keep your gifts. Brother, what I got is free. I don't owe you nothing if you don't give me nothing. That's right. Only thing I got to be is serving to God. That's right. I don't want to owe you nothing. You understand? Where you at? We at nine. Read. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Stop it now. Read it again slowly. For all y'all that hate white people, that hate people, you hating and you hating and you hating. What does it say, Doc? Also, thou shalt not oppress a stranger. Why? For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. You know how you was treated? You know what you went through. And now you put the same, putting other people through what you went through. Act like you ain't never went through it. The Lord say, remember what you went through when you treat other people bad. If you just think on we were slaves in Egypt and they tried to kill us all. Right? Remember that. And the Lord did what? Uh-uh. 
I'm going, my seed, going always, Israel going to always be around. Amen. I'm going to scatter them in every corner, but they still going to be with me. They always going to be here, right? But Israel is terrible, right? Where you at? We're at 20. Read. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. The Lord said, I prepared an angel for you, right? But he know how hard-headed we are. See, the Lord going to give us a warning because he know how stupid we are. Read. Beware of him uh -huh. and obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Look, he will kill you if you don't do what he say. That's what the Lord is saying right here. Read, brother. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice uh -huh. and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Look, wait a minute, though. I thought he said, I'm going to send an angel before. Right. Didn't he say that? Mm. Read 22 again, though, because I think he in it. Read. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Who speak? He speak. God talking about that's me, player. Go ahead. Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. That's what you want. When the Lord put your enemies in place, you know it's God. And the Lord told you, don't rejoice when you see it, right? But when you see it, you go, mm, thank you. Thank you. Because you can't outwardly show you excited, but you be doing stuff like. I don't even do that. But you be like, I got a victory. Because you know the Lord done answered your prayer. Get him up off me, God. Provide for me, Lord. I provide for you. I do whatever for you Praise if you follow me. Yes, sir. Your enemies, my enemies. Your adversaries, my adversaries, right? That means you ain't got to take care of it because God know who messes with his servants. Right? Where you at? We at 23. Read, brother. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. And you're going to cut them off. He. The Lord said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut them. See, you ain't got to do nothing. Whenever we fought, the people was already dead when we got there. Spiritually, they were right. like broke eye. Yeah. The Lord had scared them to death. We went in like we brave. <laughs> Super duper cowards. That's us. I can read it to you. When the Lord had lived in us, we went in like, like we doing it. Look, we ain't won a war ever without the Lord. You ain't even won a court case without God. I won a class action lawsuit for $8.4 million. I was part of it. The Lord was like, and I'm, I'm already spending my money. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. The Lord was like, come on, 12000 for him. 12 tribes of Israel, I'm getting you ready for it. 12000 out of 8.4? I ain't taking this. I sent it back. They sent me back with 13,000. Say, that's all you get if you send this back. I took that 13,000 <laughs> and spent every dime. You understand? I'm saying the Lord didn't want me to have that. If I'd have had too much, I'd have killed myself. I almost killed myself with $2. So I know how to kill myself. So the Lord knows what's best for his people, right? Yes, Read, sir. Doc. 24. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them 
and quite break down their images. The Lord said overthrow them and break down them false gods, didn't he? Yes, Read, brother. 27. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. Look, didn't I tell you when we went in they thoughts were cut? The Lord said, I will send my what? Fear. Before. So by the time y'all get there, they're going to be scared to death. They ain't going to do nothing. Not throw a rock or nothing. Read, brother. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Go ahead. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. The Lord said, I'm going to send a tribe in there to run them out. No. The Lord said, I got hornets to do that business. So the Lord talk hornet, don't he? Mm -hmm. What kind of noise a hornet make? Look, you ignorant Israelites. Don't know nothing. <laughs> I think. Right? So the Lord speak hornet. Look at that. The little I'm like, you gotta speak Hebrew. No, I don't. The Lord speak all languages. Right? That's right. Read, brother. 29. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. Lest the land become desolate, and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. Go ahead. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. And inherit what? The land. Because the Lord said the land is ours, right? Read, brother. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea, even unto the sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Go ahead. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto thee. And he told our, he told the children of Israel, get rid of all of them. Because one of them, some of them, can make you serve other gods. See, we didn't know the reason why the Lord wanted us to be separated from other nations. But he didn't want no you serving any other gods. And guess what we did? See, y'all know this book, right? But that it? Let's go to Numbers 12. Numbers 12. You see, you got to mind your own business. When you, when you in somebody else's business, the Lord hear you. See, it ain't, you ain't got to have from Brother O'Neill or Brother Bowie or, or any other congregants. You got to worry about God when you run in your big mouth, right? And I'm going to show you that, right? Where you at, bro? Uh, we had Numbers 12. Pick it up at verse 1. Numbers 12 and verse 1. Mind your business. Learn to do that. If you get no, stand on your business. They say standing on business, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> stand on your business, right? right? Go ahead, brother. Let's see somebody who didn't stand on business. Read. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian. Oh, why woman. he married that white girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how y'all talk. <laughs> he married a white girl. He married an African. Running your mouth. In Kroger, gang. Kroger grocery store, you talk about me. Because I done married somebody of another nature, right? Go ahead. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. And who heard it? The Lord heard it. See, look, man. Watch your mouth. Every little thing you say. Everything you say. Watch it, because the Lord always listening. Always, right? Say, say the Lord heard it, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all think the Lord petty, don't you? No, he ain't. He in all y'all business. <clears throat> he in everybody's conversations in here. I know who been talking about me. He told me. Your <laughs> brother say, you lying. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek 
above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. The meekest man on the earth, you want to make an enemy. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. <laughs> you think the Lord can't count? Lord, say all three of y'all come out here. Read, Doc. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. Go ahead. And they both came forth. Uh huh. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Go ahead. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in mine house, in all mine house. Go ahead. With him will wait, I. Wait a minute. With who? With him. With who? Him. Go ahead. Will I speak mouth to mouth? even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and in the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Go ahead. Wherefore, then were, we, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Sound like David talking to the Amalekite. Why weren't you afraid? See, why weren't you afraid to do this when you know who God is? We know who the God of Israel is, and we still run in our mouth. You better fall on them knees and repent. Amen. Especially you. You know too much. You wasting your words on killing, not saving. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Go ahead. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Uh, Aaron was talking too, though, wasn't he? Yeah. He just hit Miriam, though. Yeah. He hit Miriam with that leprosy. Right? Go ahead, brother. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. Go ahead. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. And Aaron was right. He was like, we was wrong for what we did. He didn't say she was wrong. He said we was wrong. We was wrong, bro. Please do something for her. Go ahead. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Go ahead. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God. I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had put spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Seven days read, brother. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. Go ahead. Then, and Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. Look, they all knew. She under that leprosy because she ran her mouth too much. Only thing she did was not agree with his choice of a woman, and she voiced it. Some things you got to just keep to yourself and hope the Lord don't kill you for your thoughts. He looking at you because you say you a servant. You don't want to say you a servant. Well, much is given, much is what? Required. You know that. Proverbs 12. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We almost done. Uh, we on Proverbs 12, right? Yes, sir. You got to watch what you say, people. You got to watch how you think. Because it comes from the heart, these thoughts, these, this stuff. And it's ugly. And when it come out your mouth, it could be devastating. Some people tell you, I've been holding this so long, now I'm going to blow up on you. And they let it all go. And then there's guilt after that. Because now you're in trouble. True, true, true. You done got yourself caught up. 
You shouldn't hold nothing in. You should just go to the Lord. Lord, forgive them. Lord, forgive them. Because if you ask the Lord to forgive them, you ain't holding nothing. You understand? Just forgive them. You ain't got to like him. Yeah, yeah. Lord, forgive them. Under duress, Lord, forgive them, please. That's all I got to say. So, Numbers, we have Proverbs 12 and 1, read. Yes. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. If you can't tell him nothing, he hate knowledge. Okay? She hate knowledge. But if she a brute, you could tell how she rolled. Go ahead. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord. Go ahead. But a man of wicked devices will be condemned. Right. Stay on the right side with the Lord and wait for your reward. Amen. Wait for it. Right? Go ahead. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Go ahead. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh the shame is as rottenness in his bones. Look. Look. Both ways. Both ways. Your own spouse can make you so embarrassed by their behavior, by their ugliness. It's like rottenness. And you know, right when it's rotten, it's steak. People just get away from you. Because that's all you are is negative all the time. There's never nothing positive coming out. It's always, if it's positive, it's going to lead to negative. The sun is beautiful, but it's going to rain this afternoon. Always negative. Negative. Love it. Love to see people in turmoil. Some people love this. Read, brother. Verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are are deceit. They are. Read, brother. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Look, a righteous person is going to warn you don't do that. You can pay dearly. You can go to the lake of fire. Not you could die right now, but the Lord going to remember what you're doing. So we give it sustaining advice. I ain't going to just try to tell you to live today. I want to show you how to live tomorrow. And that's with God. You want to live. Read, read, brother. Seven. The wicked are overthrown and are not. And they gone. But the that's house. That's what it means. And they are not. They dead. They gone. The wicked. Read. But the house of the righteous shall stand. Go ahead. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom. Uh-huh. But he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. Go ahead. He that is despised and has a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and, and lacketh, lacketh bread. bread. Praise the Lord. Read. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. Wait a minute. You abusive to your animals? You like to fight your dogs? Read that again. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. If you have a dog, you better take care of it. If you have a goldfish, feed it. Whatever you have, take care of it. Because God give life, not you. Amen. So whatever has life in your house, take care of it. Take care of it. Who got a dog? You love your dog. Your dog love you. What they supposed to. Read, brother. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Go ahead. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Go ahead. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. That's right. The, Go ahead. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. Wait a minute. The wicked is what? Snared. By, by what? By the transgression of his lips. How he talk. Read. But the just shall come out of trouble. Because we don't talk a lot. We be quick to hear, slow to speak. 
Read, brother. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Go ahead. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto why, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You can always think you right. Right? It said the way of a fool is right in his what? Own, Own eyes. eyes. To you, you always right. Right? Right? So you know everything. When a person know everything, you can't tell him anything, right? But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is what? Wise. You will be surprised how people can add to your life. Sorry. You'll be surprised how people can add to your life if you just hear what they got to say. I can't keep no money. Well, you may want to talk to a brother that's good with finances. <laughs> he can probably give you good counsel. Amen. Right? right? You have many people in here with great knowledge. Ask them for it. Ask them to share it. More than anything, this. This is what you really need to know. This is your foundation. But as far as your profession go, there are people here who can help you. Be meek and humble and go ask for help. How do I do this? How do I achieve this? Amen. You see what I mean? Because the Lord sent you around like-minded people to help you. Amen. You got very talented people in here. Amen. You just need to understand that the Lord don't put you among them. And it's easy to communicate with them. Hey, my brother. Hey, my sister. That's how you start off. And you'll be surprised where that can go if you are pure with your approach. The Lord will lead you to the right people. You understand? And then he'll also show you the wrong people. You got to make an educated choice as to how you're going to pursue your salvation. That's all to it. You can make it out of all this other stuff, but it's only about salvation. That's and right. your behavior and the words that you speak could be detrimental to you. So you got to watch your mouth. You got to control it, right? So look, you want to be in a position to be able to talk to God if you find yourself in trouble and hope that he'll hear you. You want him to be, you want that communication to be there. So when you run into trouble, you could talk to God directly and probably bring something to his mind that he probably forgot. Let's go to Isaiah 38. The Lord know everything, but sometimes he just wants you to remind him what you've done. Amen. Isaiah 38 and 1, read, brother. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So the Lord sent a message to Hezekiah and said, Look, you're getting ready to die, partner. Put your stuff in order. Imagine if the Lord did us that way today, right? He did Hezekiah. Now, the Lord was still on this. You know, the Lord come to you and say, hey, it's it. I'm about to lay you down, right? Read. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And said what? And said, remember stop, now. Stop, He said what? Remember. Remember! How many of y'all can go to the remember chamber? Because he got a chamber with stuff in it that he can remind the Lord of. Let's see what he remind the Lord what he did. Read. Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. He told the Lord, you know I did everything right. I did what you told me to do, right? And he started crying. Read, brother. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, go. And say to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, 
the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. See, God, like, I see my servant crying too. He did everything I told him to do, and I know it. Let me respond to him. Read. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Go ahead. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. Man, look, the Lord gave that man 15 more years. Why? Because of his past interactions with God. Who could say that? Lord, remember I did this? No, broken that car? Yeah, I remember. Oh, Lord, remember I, no. I remember you were cheating on your wife. You ain't always walk with me. So you can't say that. What you can say, though, I'm a wretched dog. Ain't no good. Ain't been good ever. Help me. He agreed to that, too. You are that. You do need me. Thank God you are, because I was going to kill you. Hezekiah had something in his hip right. to negotiate. Right. Do you? Yes, sir. Can you tell the Lord, remember I did this, Lord? Remember I did that, Lord? Some of y'all can because you've been working since you got here. Praise the Lord. Every little thing you do for the Lord, whether it be outreach, whether it be hold the door, whether it be mop a restroom, the Lord said, that's my servant. Amen. I see them. It takes humility to work for free. To do something for nothing, that takes meekness, humility, no pride. You just want to work because you already know I am working for salvation. And I'm already in the hole. I've been a sinner from day one. So I got to continue to work and work and work That's until right. I die. Every day. Every day. Ain't no breaks for y'all. Y'all prisoners in this. Prisoners. Now he'll give you a little reprieve sometimes, but you are a prisoner. Make no mistake about it. And how do we become prisoners? Our mouth, right? <laughs> Remember that, right? We have no king but Caesar. Remember that? We pay for it, ain't we? Because our mouth. Had to have the last word, right? So, you, let's go to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. Pick it up at 10. 1 Peter 3 and 10. What time is it? 1647. It ain't two yet. <laughs> you ain't telling on me. Tell me you got time. I'd be in that house getting chewed at. First Peter 3. <laughs> you raise the Lord, right? First Peter 3. And pick it up at verse 10 and read. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Speak book. It says speak no guile, right? Learn how to speak book. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to quote some scripture. Amen. You know, learn how to communicate with Bible in your conversation. So the person can always say, you a Christian or something? Yeah. They'll tell you that yeah. because of your chaste conversation. Amen. You see what I mean? I told a brother last night, Hey, brother, it's my Sabbath. So some of the things you're trying to talk about, I'm not going to do it. He was like, ah, brother, I didn't know. You should have told me. He was like, I need to learn that, huh? I was like, yeah, you need to come to class. You see what I mean? But it wasn't no big deal. I just had to let him know who I was. Because he'd have kept going. But it's my job to bring people to Christ in any way possible. That was an opportunity to tell him, I'm an Israelite. 
I keep the law. That was what I turned that into. Why? Because he had no clue. So it's up to you to pull these people out the lion's mouth by any way you can. It's okay to do good on the Sabbath, y'all. You know what I mean? Don't be over-righteous, man. You can work on the Sabbath with this. Teach that word. Go where you got to go to teach that book because God coming back and we on a time frame. You can't be playing something. I'm going to do it next week. Do it now. When, when the Lord's like, go on, do it. Go on, do it. Say something to him. That ain't just you saying that. That's the Holy Spirit. Say, drop a track on him. Drop something on him. Ah, let me get out this car and go do it. You be on your way. You be like, eh, let me go do it. Because you never know where it leads. You just got to do your work. We are planters. That's right. And we're planting seeds. You're not converting people. You just plant the seed, right? Where you at? We at 11. Read. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. His ears are open unto their what? Their prayers. See, the Lord hear the righteous. So who hear the wicked? Satan. See, Satan can give you stuff too. He told God, he told the Lord, I got all this I can give you. So he can give you money. He can give you material things. That's all he can give you. Right. You would think that's God giving it to you. Right. But you ain't even keeping his laws. Right. You ain't keeping no commandments or nothing. You being blessed. You think it's God. Satan can give you a lot of stuff. If you petty, he'll give you that petty thing you want. A pack of cigarettes. That's all it takes for you. But some people, it take a lot more. And he'll give it to you. Because it's all going to lead where? To the lake of fire. The Lord said, he said, I got all this power I can give you anything you want. You got to see him working through the Gentile and everybody. Because money is not what they lack. Not at all. No. The book is what they lack. And we see it. It's quite opposite, right? We ain't got no money, but we see the word. <laughs> they got all the money, but they don't see the word. Think about us who broke and still don't see the word. Satan walking around, walking dead. Don't want the truth. Only thing they want is this life. Right. And God know that. Right. If this all you want, I'm going to give it to you. Right? Where you at? Bottom of 12. Go ahead. But the face of the Lord is against them Hold that up. do Wait evil. Wait a minute. Where you at? We in 1 Peter 3. Oh, we said, go ahead. Go ahead. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Mm -hmm. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. If you suffer for what? Righteousness sake. You should be happy. Who suffered this week? You should be giving yourself a round of applause. Boy, if you suffer this week, that means you're a servant. Because this is, serve. look, suffering is part of it. If you don't suffer, you ain't getting in the kingdom. Right. You got to be going through something. You got to suffer. Just like the Lord did. Right? You got to suffer. So he say, but in, if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. Go ahead. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. And you shouldn't be because you're supposed to be riding on that faith. That's right. I mean, God, if you know he's real, you ain't scared of nothing. You ain't afraid of nothing. Read. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Where? In your heart. Not just with your mouth. That's right. In your hearts. Go ahead. And be ready always to give an answer to every man. Some that, men. Every man. You got to be ready always to give an answer. What? Go ahead. That asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Hey, because they're going to ask you, man, why are you so happy? 
you ain't happy. You just accept what the Lord. <laughs> Look. The Lord say always be ready to give an answer, right? Because this is how it works. They pray to God. Man. God say, okay, you want knowledge? I'm going to send my servant across your path. Now you somewhere minding your business. And here come, if I only knew the true and living God. You in the line, you way in the back. You didn't hear that. You easing up. I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to just wait till they check out. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to give her a flyer. Because now, because that's what you do. You're a servant. You're gathering. You're, you're trying to find out who want to get to the kingdom. That's right. That's your job. <laughs> Not who want to go to the concert this afternoon. Who want to get saved by God? Right. So you out showing them the road to salvation. That's our role. So when they pray to God and the Lord send them your way, you supposed to be ready not to put things in your own words. What's the hope? Why you like the way you are? Man, I read the book. I keep the commandments. That's what I do. It ain't nothing secret. It ain't no, oh, you got to come to this. Nah, I keep the commandments of God and I stay prayed up and try to love my enemies. That's all you want to do. That's all you want to do. You don't want to try to do too much. Where you at? Uh, we had Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 5. Pick it up at verse 1. You only get this time to get it right, y'all. After this is the judgment. So we're not, we're not doing this every Sabbath just for a fashion show right. or to give you a place to go. Right. We're trying to prepare, prepare you for the coming of the Lord through his scriptures, right? right? Yeah. And we're trying to read it to you. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 5, pick it up at verse 1. Tells you how to conduct yourself when you come to the house of the Lord. Read. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. You think you come in here and you give a little money, you good. Right? The Lord say, be more ready to what? Hear. hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Right? Just come here to learn. That's right. Right? Get off, you leave you in the parking lot. You come here and here to learn. Read, brother. Be not rash with thy mouth. Be not what? Rash. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Because we think we can say anything we want under any conditions. The Lord say, don't do it. Don't say anything because you can't. Because you my servant. You got to watch what you say. Read. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Let thy words be what? Few. Few is how many? If I say give me a few dollars, you're going to give me two dollars. <laughs> don't act like you don't know what a few is. So it say let your word be what? Few. Praise the Lord. That's three. God bless. That's two. <laughs> In Jesus' name, that's three. You want to learn them two or three. Greetings. Happy Sabbath. Learn them small phrases, and you won't hurt nobody. And what will be said is, they don't do much talking in that church duty now. They'll speak to you, though. <laughs> They'll speak you to death. But they ain't going to do no gossip. <laughs> Man, they will speak to you to death. 
but you can't hold no private conversations. You got to have a Bible open. And that's how it should be. Because if you allow this to lead to do what it do, you'll find yourself in a lot of trouble. Who married? So we ain't going to even talk about it all. <laughs> Boy, were you married? Them things come out like a Uzi. But yeah, brother. We have verse three. Read. For a dream coming through the multitude of business. And it does. When when a guy is in business, he has dreams for his business. He 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 sleeping on how I can have a good business. His that's what he's thinking about. He's like, man, I want to have my own business. So he have dreams and aspirations for it. Read, brother. And a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Look, a fool. You know it when you walk in the door. Somebody, every time he talking. Every time come in, they talking. You see it, and then you hear what they say. And you be like, this dude don't ever shut up. Or this girl, don't, I know y'all seen it. This. At work, y'all be like, well, who I got the post off? Boy, the post office, it goes down. Right? And, hey. But if you with that book, they going to avoid you. Man. She don't do no gossiping. She don't, she don't play that. He don't play that. Is he angry? No. That's what they be starting asking you because you don't do nothing. Is he angry? Where you at? We at four. Read. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. You said you're going to do it, but now you're going back on your vow. Guess who ain't going to let you go back on it, though? God ain't letting you go back on it. You owe me, and I want it. I want what you said you're going to give me. And he do. You think it's over. He ain't never thinking this over. Read. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. What it say? Suffer, suffer, thy, not, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Uh -huh. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Uh -huh. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? The Lord be like, I'm tired of hearing his voice. Destroy everything he done made. You lose your house, your job, and everything because of your mouth. The Lord said, I'm tired of hearing him. Take everything from him. And that angel like, no problem. I do just that. And here you is sitting up in here talking about some. They don't need him doing that now. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry, and start over. Thank God he like that. Right? What's next, brother? Seven. Seven. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities. But do what? But fear thou God. And Solomon said, all is vanity. All is vanity. And this man said, in all that, fear God. Fear God. Get out of your own way, Israel. Let's go to Proverbs 18. Kids class over. Yes, sir. Oh, that's 205. Proverbs 8, was that Proverbs 18, 21? Yes, sir. Proverbs 18, 21, one place. What does it say? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are where? In the power of the tongue. Go ahead. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hey. Watch what you say to people. You can kill them or you can give them life. You can speak life in them. You can speak those things, man. If the Lord listening to you, Lord be merciful. Give them give a chance. Okay. I do it because my servant asked me. You don't know he asked me, but you know that person you prayed for is probably up. You know, okay. You don't want to say it was your prayer that did it. <laughs> But I do. <laughs> if it weren't for me praying for you, be dead. Now look, 
Now look, you got to have that kind of power with them relationship with God, because you got to know God listening to you. Amen. See, he don't hear the wicked. He hear the righteous. If you still righteous and you scared to call on them, what's wrong with you? You supposed to be brave when you walk with God. Amen. You ain't supposed to be, uh, I want to be heard. Man. What? God hear the righteous. Look at y'all. He been hearing your prayers. Look at y'all. You still living. Y'all know we should have been dead. How many Sabbaths you break? Death sentence. So stop it with the um, innocent, right? <laughs> Judges 11. Ain't nobody innocent. But you know, sometimes you could talk too much. But when you talk too much, you still got to stay loyal to the things you said. God going to keep you loyal. When you talk to God, right? He hear his servants. So you better be careful with the things you say. Because the Lord say, don't make a vow and don't keep it, right? So we're going to show you a cat who really is the epitome of this. Judges 11, pick it up at verse 1 and read. Now Jephthah, the Giladite, was a ma mighty man of valor. Valor. Hmm? Mighty man of valor. Mighty man of valor. And he was the son of an harlot. He was the son of a what? An harlot. He was the son of a prostitute. Go ahead. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up. And they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Uh, your mama ain't our mama. Yeah. Get out. We got the same mama. You know, you ain't with us. Your mama prostitute. Beat it. Go ahead. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren. And dwelt in the land of Tob, and there were gathered vain men to Jephthah, and went out with him. Oh, uh, go ahead. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Because Jephthah was the one who could fight. See, y'all done thrust out that dude, right? But now they in trouble. Mm -hmm. See, when you scared, you find a way, and you will humble yourself. These seven brothers were afraid. Now they knew who weren't afraid. That was Jephthah, and they put him out. Now let's see what happened. Read, brother. And they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? Didn't y'all put me out because y'all hated me? Go ahead, brother. And why are ye coming to me now when ye are in distress? You in what? Distress. Because you scared now. Read. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So they humble now. They say, but still. Even at the insult, they were like, that's okay, but we still came to get you. We sorry. Right? Go ahead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, if ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them before me, shall I be your head? Shall I be your what? Head. Go ahead. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, the Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words which the Lord before the Lord in Mizpah. And where? Mizpah. Go ahead. And Jephthah said, sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me, that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt, from Arnon even unto Jabbok, 
and unto Jordan. Now, therefore, restore those lands again peaceably. Go ahead. He lied. Go ahead. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon and said unto him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness into the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab. But he would not consent. And Israel abode in Kadesh. Because none of them wanted Israel to go by their land. Right? So he landed and he was like, man, we didn't take anything. Skip down right now to uh, 29. 29, brother. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. Hey, he getting ready to fight these boys, and he ain't scared. But you know, sometimes you can do a little bit too much with your mouth. My, my, my. Hey, you can be overhyped. I've seen boxers do this. Go ahead, brother. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. It's going to surely be who? The Lord. So this man said, whatever come through my door, he did not think clearly right here. These are what you call emotions running away. You get caught up in the moment and you feel in a certain kind of way about yourself. And I understand the prayer and who he was talking to, but not to consider the broadness of your, of what you vowed. I mean, it could have, anything could have came through that door. Right. Yeah. But in this case, the Lord is merciful, though, because he know the man don't know, really mean what he mean, right? The Lord is merciful. He's like, nah, you didn't really mean that. Therefore, I'm not going to hold that to you. Let's see if God is like that. Or do he want his money when he say he want it, well, right? Yeah. Read, Doc. So Jephthah passed over unto the Where church. you at? We had 32. Read. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hand. Go ahead. And he smote them from Arior. I'm sorry, I probably messed that up. Arior. Even till thou come to Minith, even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued, subdued before the children of Israel. So he killed, the Lord was with him. He took care of his business, right? Not remembering, but that vow. Read. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. Look, if the Lord was going to say, never mind, this would have been one of the moments. Let's see if the Lord say, I know you didn't mean it. Let's see what the Lord say. Read. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I what? And I cannot go back. And you can't either. My, my, my. You done opened your mouth 20 years ago? The Lord still want it. Praise the Lord. He heard what you said, and he wanted it. Whether or not you want to give it or not is another thing. But he want what he said you're going to give. And you vowed that you would do it. If it was a job in this class, you better get on it. You better get on your job because you said, Lord, I want to do this. Get on your job. Read, brother. 36. And she said unto him, my father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, 
do to me according to that which thou hast proceeded out of thy mouth. For as much as the Lord has taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Ammon. Look, if you got a child with education like this, you are doing your job. Because the first thing she said is, do to me according to that which has proceeded out of thy mouth. That means, go ahead, brother. And she said unto her father, let this thing be done for me. This is all I want you to do, daddy. Go ahead. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. Let me and my girls spend together two months so I could think on not having children. Think on what I'm actually doing here, right? Because she, this sister, she said, give me two months to deal with it. Y'all know y'all wouldn't have came back. <laughs> Daddy, I'm gone. Handle that business. This sister came back. She said, give me two months. And her girls was right with her. They weren't saying, go, girl, leave. Right. Come on, girl, let me get you a man before you go lay right. down. They weren't doing none of that. They was with her. Right. Helping her to get through it. Not doing contrary to what she already believed. She just hung in there. 60 days. Or was it 62 days? But any day. <laughs> Go ahead. 38. Look what he say. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountain. Go ahead. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow. You mean the Lord didn't say stop? Because he told Abraham, don't, don't kill Ishmael. He could have, don't kill Isaac. He could have stopped him. But what did it say, brother? And it came to and pass. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed. And she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel. It was a custom where? In Israel. Go ahead. That the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Giladite, four days in a year. That's something that they decide to do for her. You understand? That's something they decide to do for that sister. He's not telling y'all to do that. But if y'all want to acknowledge this sister... For her sacrifice, you can do that. Because that's our sister right there. Amen. And she did that thing. But you know what she was? She was a real good poker player. She was like, if I do this, I'm getting in the kingdom. If the Lord say today, you're going in the kingdom if you lay it down. Because uh -huh. that's what I worry about. Yeah. Am I doing enough? Yeah. No, it ain't going to come and tell you nothing. You got to get your work speak for you. Yeah. Your work's going to be, you going to be able to say what Hezekiah said. My work's, Lord. Uh -huh. Look what I did. Yes, Lord. I cleaned that parking lot every week. Okay. I did that, Lord. I did that for you, not them. I did that. You got to be able to say that. Amen. If you can't say that, you ain't did nothing. Okay. You just spent time on you. More and more time. People who give up themselves, the people they give to, they know it. And they thankful for these people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's you playing a role in blessing people because the Lord done set you up to do it. Amen. You shouldn't be out killing nobody with your words. Amen. We got to get out of here because y'all ain't telling on me where you at. 
you want to go to Ephesians? Was that it? Yes, sir. Uh, skip down. We going to skip. Let's go to James 1. Okay. Y'all can get the rest on your own. We got printouts. James 1. I got to get you out of here. James 1 and 26. Y'all know all about Job, right? That's what we were going to go into. So we'll catch him another time, maybe a, after the lesson. Because <laughs> it don't stop because we leave here right. off this stage. It continues. James 1 and 26. James 1 and 26. If you're sitting in this saying you're a man of God, know this. Read. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridling, not his tongue, but deceive with his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Look, you run around talking about how good you are in the Lord, but your mouth say something else. You fake. You are not real. You just talking. This ain't no place for talkers. This is a place for doers. If you like to talk, Back over the door. We trying to get stuff done. The Lord know who the gossipers are. He know who the wicked is among us. And you know who you are. I'm talking to you. You fake it in here. Acting like you serve the Lord and something else coming out of here. We ain't putting up with it. I'm telling all y'all. You got to walk the walk. People watching you around here. And we ain't having it. Israel, where you at? We done right there. Titus 1. What page Titus on? One of these pages. <laughs> A lot of y'all ain't never read Titus. <laughs> That's right. Titus 1. Pick it up at verse 4, brother. on page uh, 1852. Right. Titus 1-4. Read, brother. To Titus, mine own son after the coming faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Go ahead. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I have appointed thee. And that's what the Israel of God is doing. They putting elders in every city to do what? Get this word out. Amen. That's why we hire him. Always. <laughs> and travels included. Read, brother. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Go ahead. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. A bishop must be what? Blameless. As a steward of what? Of God. Go ahead. Not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, nor given to filthy lucre. Not self-willed, right? Not soon angry. You patient. They don't ever see you angry. When they see you, I ain't never saw that brother man. <laughs> you scared me, right? Uh, not giving the wine. Do things in moderation. That's all. You ain't got to drink the whole bottle, right? No striker. You don't hit nobody. Keep your hands off everybody, right? Not giving to filthy lucre. You can't be bought. Can't be bought. When you can't be bought, that's scary, right? Go ahead, hey. But a lover of hospitality. A lover of what? Hospitality. A lover of what? Hospitality. You gotta have that. Read. A lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. As he has been what? Taught. You holding on to that word that you've learned since you've been here. You still holding on to it. Read. 
that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. By arguing with them. No. By debating with them. No. Sound doctrine. Open this book and let the book speak. Yeah. It can do more than you ever could. Amen. Just know where it is. Study your word on your own. Amen. So when them people come to you, oh, go right here. Because huh. you, you exercise in this book. Amen. You know where stuff is. You got to know how to, uh, I don't remember. Let me make a call. Let me Google. You can find it. You always got to be ready to help God's people right. get on track. That's right. Where you at? We at 10. Go ahead. For there are many, I'm sorry, we at nine, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the game says. Because there's a lot of people that talk, but they can be convinced if you hit them with stuff they don't know. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, I know you know that, but do you know this? Humble them right quick, some of them. Read. Now we attend. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. The Lord said there be many, especially among us, the Israelites. Those are the circumcision. Because, boy, we could talk. And you know we can talk because we can rap. <laughs> Cold with them raps. Boy, I, any brother can lay it down right now, even though they ain't a rapper. Say something, brother. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, no problem. I got you. Why? Because we full of words. Too many. Full of them. If nothing else, we got words. We ain't got no money. We got words. <laughs> <laughs> Israel got nothing but words. I'm telling you, that's why we so cold in that booth. Because we, we can make it rhyme, too. <laughs> Read, brother. Absolutely. Bombs away. Read, brother. 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouth must be what? Stop. Go ahead. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are not. For a filthy lucre's sake. And that's when you get angry. When you see somebody being taken advantage of. And you give them that false doctrine. That's when you put that thing down. You let them know. Uh-uh. Not the Lord's cert. Uh-uh. Get out of here with that, buddy. That ain't, that don't go. That's a lie. That is a lie. Ain't nobody going to have it. Kingdom coming down. That's right. Go in your job and say ain't no Christmas. You'll be at home early. I do. <laughs> I do. You'll be at home quick. Thank you, Lord. Right? You want to get your unemployment? Say that. Go ahead, brother. Twelve. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Go this, ahead. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. The Lord say, rebuke them how? Sharply. That means go at them. Cut it off. David said, no, you ain't leaving out of here with a head, bud. I'm cutting it off. Why? Because I ain't got to spare you. I ain't got to spare the ones claim they know. I'm taking that purple off you. I'm stripping you because you ain't got no knowledge. What you got on this purple? You ain't got no knowledge. You got an outfit on. You got on wristbands and boots. <laughs> Stop it. Get in here and learn this word and distribute it with weakness, with humility. Help people. Quit making people lick your shoes. The Bible tell you all about what's going to happen. That ain't what we do, though. We say, get up. You my brother. That's what we say. The Lord put them down there. We say, get up. When they find humility to the Lord, you can leave that alone. But when they come to you, get up, brother. You my brother. Let me help you get to where you got to go. That's your job. Read, Doc. 14. 
not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Because they all they are is Jewish fables, y'all. Uh -huh. Right? Read. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Uh -huh. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. And some people you can't help. You can't help them. You give them the word, but they don't want the word. True. Stay away from them. That's the Lord warning you. Stay away from these people. People ain't no good for you. Right? Read. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. See that? They always talking about, oh, the Lord is this and the Lord is this. But your work say something totally different. My, my, my. And the Lord looking at what you're doing. Stop it and save yourself. Quit talking about people in your house. Quit talking about people at your job. Quit talking about people on your phone. Open your book and read. Take the information in. Quit putting information out. Unless it's word, right? It says they profess to know God, but in works they deny him being what? Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. reprobate. Got to be able to see these people. These people don't want nothing done. If it's up to them people, we wouldn't be in this building today. They never cared and they walked away. You still here. The Lord knew how to separate his people. And a good tree always bears good fruit. You don't need them. They left. Let them be gone. But you can always come back, Israel. I want you to know that. With humility, though, because we kept going. Titus 2, last place. Let me know when you get there. Verse 1. Verse 1, last place, read. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity. Look, those the old guys, older cats, be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. You got to be patient if you hold in an office for the Lord. Bro, you can't be like you was in the street. You got to be patient and long-suffering, right? What else? Eight. Ver skip to eight. You own eight, right, brother? Uh, we have verse three. Oh, my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm no. in Titus 1. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, brother. The aged women likewise. Aged women? That they be in behavior as becoming the holiness, not false accusers. We talking about the older sisters now. Not false accusers, right? What else? Not giving too much wine. Uh-huh. Teachers of good things. Teachers of what? Good things. Not how to find a man. Oh, my, my. Teachers of this word. Just open the book when sister's talking. Don't let your emotions run away from you. Open the book. I can show you all kind of sisters in here that got it done. That got it done. And their name ain't even mentioned. You sisters have a great role to play. You better play it. Go ahead, brother. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. What the older women teach you? The young women to be sober. Hey, the older women trying to teach y'all how not to be drunk. Listen to them, young sisters. Right? Go ahead. To love their husband. Love your husband, although you hate him. Make sure you love. They can tell you how to be patient with that buster. Right? They will show you because they already did it. They going through it. They trying to help you get through it, right? So you can still be received by God Amen. later because you know you'll leave them. But if you talk to the sisters, then you might stay. Like, you mean I can go to Lake of Five and a year? 
Let me go on and stay with him. Read. To love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So the Lord say, look, y'all got to work with each other. Right. So y'all sisters can turn out beautiful the way he wants y'all to. So he want the younger sisters to pull from the older sisters. He want the older sisters to freely give it. That's what he needs y'all to do so our sisters could be where they need to be. Right? Go ahead. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. Go ahead. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. So if you're a young cat walking around here, right, and you call yourself a servant of the Lord, it's a young man like, exhort to be what? Sober-minded. Right? Sober-minded, not spiritually drunk. Be sober-minded. Be Have some focus, brothers. Read. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the, the contrary part may be ashamed. The Lord say good pattern, show thy safe a pattern of what? Good works. You see what I mean? As a young man, you need to watch what you're doing. You get it in doctrine showing uncorruptness. That means you got to study. That means you got to get with the elders and know what you're talking about in this book, right? Gravity and sincerity. You got to be sincere about this word. It's hard for a young man. And you, did you read A? Uh, we in A right now. Read, brother. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Because your speech is sound. When you get book, you read them, read it. You read it on the line. And they don't have nothing bad to say about you because you only read to them. That's all you do. Open this book on them, right? Read. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Look, quit having all the back talk. You know when you're a servant, do your job to the best of your ability, right? right. Uh, you got to do what you're asked to do without having the last word. You know what you're supposed to do. Do it. That's all. Go ahead. Not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all good things. Go ahead. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Unfear to who? All men. And we need that grace. Go ahead. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That means you can do it. He said you need to live soberly, righteously, and godly. Where? In this present world. So don't tell me what you can't do. You can do it. You don't want to do it. You still want to fight your own battles. You can't fight what you can't see. Read. Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for what? That blessed hope. We're looking for it. Go ahead. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's who we're waiting on. That's why we're doing all we do. Read. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And that's what he's trying to do. Put his people together. Peculiar people he called us, right? Is that what makes you peculiar? You keep the law. You keep the law of God, the feast days. You keep the dietary law. You don't do things they do. Therefore, you're peculiar. You are peculiar when you keep the Sabbath. You really are. Out of all the people in the world keeping the Sabbath, it may not even be 1%. Everybody, because Satan undeceived the whole world. But you not. 
You should be happy you see them scriptures, man. Where you at, brother? We at 15. We at last place. Go ahead. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Look, it ain't worth it to despise another man. You know what I mean? And it's our mouth and our words that get us in trouble, not just with God, with individuals in your life. They tell you all the time, and they told you since you was a child, mind your own business. Stay out of other people's stuff. Don't they tell you that? And you just, that's biblical knowledge without even saying the Bible. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.